We're so happy to have you guys and welcome to Upward Hartford. Upward Hartford is a 34,000 square foot innovation hub that opened its doors a year and a half ago. And in that year and a half, we have worked tirelessly to transform Hartford into a silicon hub, with this being the center of all entrepreneurial activity. We have worked with the corporate community. They are very active in the space. More than 40 corporates call this home on a weekly basis. Some are active members. We worked, we've helped build the top of an ecosystem in Hartford by pulling in startups from around the world and getting them deals with the corporates and working with Connecticut Innovations to get them money so they stay here and build companies here. We have had more uh, hundreds of events here in the last year and a half to stimulate the local ecosystem. We have done everything, workshops, hackathons, art shows, tons of things. There's a whole community of about 9,000 strong that has been here in the last year and a half enjoying some of the, our activities and help, we help them build their startups, help them go through the pain points of the beginning, all in an effort so we can start producing a nice chunk of our own startups and not have to bring from the outside all the time. Um, this is a great time for us. In a few days, Monday to be exact, the InsureTech Accelerator, our member startup bootcamp, our partner, is going to bring their 10 startups are starting here on Monday, InsureTech startups that will be working very closely in the next few months with the insurers. Our coding school that's going to be here all year is also Tech Talent South is about to start its class. And in April, our newest initiative, Upward Labs, will bring another 10 startups focused on H tech and smart building tech. This is a program, again, with Connecticut Innovations, but also in partnership with 20 Hartford, Greater Hartford corporates. And these startups will be living and working here for six months, and the program is funded for two years. So all in all, 40 new startups will call this place home for at least six months, and hopefully much more. Um, therefore, it's very fitting that the governor decided to announce from here, we have been doing economic development in the last year and a half without really being told ever to do it. We love this city, we believe in this city, and we can't wait to hear what the governor has to say and to work very closely with your administration to get more done. Thank you so much. I want to introduce... I would like to introduce uh, Governor Ned Lamont. It's an honor to have you here, and thank you so much. Thanks, Shona. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, hey, Shona. Uh, Upward Hartford is happening. I was just walking around upstairs, meeting the entrepreneurs from you know different countries, uh, and and Connecticut is happening. And it starts with ecosystems just like this, entrepreneurs, and a lot of the energy that is uh, coming to Connecticut. And uh, but we still have a lot of work to do. Um, I got to say, I'm so happy to be here today. I've spent you know hours every day mired in the budget. And uh, this is an opportunity to talk about where Connecticut is going and why we believe in Connecticut and how we get this state growing again. And uh, we have been a laggard, if you look around the country, for uh, many, many uh, decades, to tell you the truth. And that's about to change as we're rethinking our whole strategy when it comes to uh, economic growth and economic development. And I'll just precursor this. Um, a lot of these ideas, um, we put together a policy team of, um, a couple of months ago now, and they came up with ideas from the business community, not-for-profit, and the labor community, trying to find ways we structure what we want to do. And uh, the policy team came up with one overarching idea. They called it a Secretary of Commerce, somebody who would have overall responsibility, not just for DECD, but everything from looking at education, workforce development, energy, the environment, transportation, and housing, so we can think holistically in terms of how we recruit, keep, and grow companies here in the state of Connecticut. You know, with that in mind, you know, I'm here and very proud to be able to introduce somebody who will be our, in effect, that role, commissioner of a new revamped uh, DECD. That's David Lehman. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, David in a few minutes. But um, this is something that is uh, long overdue. Uh, it, it, it's also about giving everybody an opportunity. And uh, David and I have been talking about this a lot, but there are now opportunity zones that have been created around the country by federal legislation. And a lot of states don't quite know what to do with these opportunity zones. There's 72 of these zones right here in the state of Connecticut, in distressed municipalities, cities as well as uh, small towns, where it's capital gains tax-free if you invest here. 
is something that David has had some involvement with in his role um, in Goldman Sachs and something we're going to be looking forward to, to target this, to make sure that when we recruit and grow companies, it's, an oper it's uh, going to be an economy that works for everybody. And um, I see my friend uh, Michael Cantor here. And uh, a lot of the ideas behind this, we, I learned um, as part of our efforts to recruit um, an IT company called Infosys here. And it was uh, probably two and a half years ago that my great friend, Indra Nui, then CEO of Pepsi, introduced me to um, the leaders of Infosys. And Connecticut was not necessarily on their radar screen. But uh, we started a conversation, business person to business person, about um, how IT skills for the 21st century are going to be so key to all of our major industries here in Connecticut. And then, thanks to Indra's introduction, we got the head of Infosys up here, and um, we had a Catherine Smith from DECD and Luke Bronin, and we really had the business leaders there in healthcare and advanced manufacturing talking about why they wanted to be here in Connecticut. And what I learned from that is that sometimes the best advocates for our amazing state are the business leaders who are here. And uh, those are the ones that can make that connection. And that's what we've tried to reposition, not just on DECD, but repositioning CERC and repositioning that through a new memo of understanding so that CERC is uh, more than a research. It's also going to be the aggressive recruiting arm for the state of Connecticut as we look around and find those companies that are a great fit for our amazing state. And to lead the new revamped CERC, you know, I am very proud to say that we're going to have two amazing uh, co-chair people for that. One is Indra, who I just mentioned, and the other is Jim Smith. And uh, between Indra and Jim, we have folks who have connections all around the country and connections, deep connections here within the state of Connecticut in terms of what we have to do, prioritize to bring people here to the state and take a second look. With that, I really just want to say something, you know, personal about David. Um, this is a guy, a young man, um, with his wife, Laura, uh, at the very top of his game at one of the leading banks in the country with two young kids and lives, what, an hour and a half from here. And uh, he came and approached us uh, looking at uh, founding a, a, a mutual friend who introduced us. We only met a couple of weeks ago. And uh, David said, um, I want to do what I can to help and I think I can be helpful for the state of Connecticut. Uh, I've got some background in real estate. I've got background in restructuring. I have a lot of uh, corporate relationships that help. I've do, done things in municipal finance, and, um, and I am ready to roll up my sleeves and take the lead on this. And uh, in less than two weeks, uh, here he is. And um, I cannot be more proud to be able to have you there as a special advisor to the governor when it comes to what we got to do in terms of budget and policy and tax, in terms of overall bringing together the different facets of government to make sure that this is a state that welcomes and grows jobs. With that, let me introduce to you David Lehman. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Lamont. It's great to be here. Good morning. It is truly an honor and privilege to join Governor Lamont's administration. I'm excited to play a role in growing Connecticut's economy and making sure it works for all families. I share the governor's belief that sustainable job and economic growth and continued investment are critically important to our collective future. With the formation of PACT, the state will now have a comprehensive infrastructure and corresponding strategy to attract, retain, and grow business and investment in the state. I am thrilled to be joining the team and look forward to working with all stakeholders to further the governor's economic vision. Governor Lamont's accessible style and pragmatic results-driven approach really appealed to me. That, that's why I reached out three, uh, three odd weeks ago. I completely agree that we are going to get more done for the state and our future by working together, and that means collaborating with my colleagues at other agencies, our General Assembly, and all the residents and businesses that want to see our state improve. I know much more unites us versus divides us, and I strongly believe that we are all united in the goal of having a robust, dynamic, and diverse state economy. I'm honored to join the DECD, a group of hardworking individuals with great reputations. On a personal note, my wife, Laura, who grew up in Westport and is here today, 
Um, when we were moving out of New York City 10 years ago, we were looking for a place to raise a family. I was informed by her that Connecticut was the only option, despite my growing up in New Jersey. No debate. Now you know who the real decision maker is in our household. So after 10 years of raising our family here in the state, I know not, not only that she is the boss, but she was also right. I look forward to serving the state and all the people of the state, and I look forward to getting to work very shortly. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Laura. Uh, keep whispering in his ear. And, um, but what David said is um, also true of the uh, next person I want to introduce. Um, you know, Indra wasn't born in Connecticut. She wasn't born in America. And uh, I think the folks down in Washington, D.C. ought to remember sometimes that sometimes people that come to this state and come to this country are the greatest citizens, more passionate about what we're all about. And we're so lucky to have Indra here a uh, former CEO of PepsiCo, but a champion for the state of Connecticut and why we want to be here. And I can't be prouder to be able to say thank you for being our co-chairman. Thank you, Ben. Good morning, everyone. It's a real privilege to be here, Ned, and thank you for having me. Um, my love for Connecticut is irrational, and I'll tell you why. I came to the United States 40 years ago, and uh, I came to school at Yale. Ned and I were classmates. And you remember the old stretch Connecticut limousines, not the buses, they used to have the stretch Connecticut limousines. I got off the plane, and first time in the United States, I got into the limousine, sat next to the driver because the limousine was full. And as we were driving into um, 95 and coming into Connecticut, the driver said to me, you're now entering the greatest state in the nation. You're entering the greatest state in the nation. Then as we got into exit two and exit three, he said, and lady, if you do very well, Maybe you'll get a chance to live in Connecticut. And if you do really, really well at Yale, you might even live in this town called Greenwich. This is what he told me. 28 years ago, 28 years ago, we moved to, Greenwich, to Connecticut and to Greenwich. So I feel extremely privileged to be living in Connecticut and Greenwich, Connecticut in particular. My kids grew up in Connecticut. Connecticut gave them the best education, safe neighborhoods, Four Seasons, just a beautiful state with a waterfront, sensible people, sensitive people, globally aware people. I love this state. And I'd like people to say once again, Connecticut is the greatest state. We made some detours, but we are once again the greatest <laughs> state in the country. Uh, that's my hope. And now that I'm through with my tenure as chairman and CEO of PepsiCo, I want to give as much time as Ned wants to work with the wonderful Jim Smith to figure out what we can do to bring Connecticut to its glory again, bring companies back to Connecticut, bring, job, bring jobs back to Connecticut. That is my singular goal. I am not leaving Connecticut at all, even though people keep suggesting I should go to some zero tax state. Uh-uh. I am committed to Connecticut. I'm committed to making Connecticut one of the greatest states in the nation again. That's why I'm here. So thank you for having me, Ned. <laughs> All right, companies, how are you going to say no to that? Come on. You're turning around those bands. Um, and, and Jim Smith has been a great friend for many years. We did the thing when the federal employees looked like they weren't going to get paid in, in less than seven hours. Webster Bank, I think a little help from Jim Smith, we're one of the first banks to uh, show up and, uh, and make a difference there. And it's sort of a reminder of how we're trying to do things a little bit differently. Um, you know, starting now in terms of public-private partnerships, how we can work collaboratively with the private sector like we did with the um, federal employees, like we're trying to do with this collaboration between DECD and CERC and make sure the business community is helping the state as we recruit and grow jobs. With that, who better co-chairman than Jim Smith? Thank you, Governor Mott. <laughs> Thank you all. Governor Lamont, I deeply appreciate your confidence in me, and I'm so excited about being able to work with you uh, to make sure that Connecticut has a strong and vital future, and who better than uh, an inspiration <laughs> to me, Indra Nui, uh, just amazing and iconic visionary leader. You inspire me every day, and I'm just thrilled to be able to work with you. And, and David and Laura, uh, it's serendipitous, it seems, that you've made such 
an extraordinary decision which will redound to the benefit of Connecticut in so many different ways. And your knowledge of economic development is at the core of what we really need in order to be able to succeed. You know, I, I want to acknowledge uh, Governor Lamont's uncanny ability to bring people together around common cause. And in this case, it's about a public-private partnership that will stimulate uh, development activities in Connecticut and economic development as well. It's just remarkable what you've done in, in bringing people together, and we're really happy to see it and to be a part of it. So we think about uh, the fact that CERC has served Connecticut well for 25 years, and I think Bob Santee is here today. And Bob, I want to say thank you to you and your team for all the good work that you have done. And now, yeah, yeah, so. and now has a ha, comes along a governor that has a vision for uh, resource development, economic development uh, for the future of Connecticut, and he's also informed by his business background, which helps him to think in in a more visionary way about pulling people together in pursuit of those common goals. And I think that's what's extraordinary here. So he looks at all right, what will I do with DECD? And I may have to reorganize that because I know that in order to execute a strategy, I have to organize well around it and then repurpose CERC and then form a pact between the two and then stimulate engagement by the business community, which is very enthusiastic about this opportunity and going to be very supportive, where they will then unify and they will become ambassadors for the cause. And they'll be deployed in uh, retention activities as well as... Uh, uh, other development activities for the state. So it's really exciting to know that we are all around this together and that we're committed toward this common cause. So I think really in the end what we hope to do is ensure that emphasis, which both Indra and, and UNED were so instrumental in bringing to Connecticut, will not be a one-off success, but rather will be a prototype for the future of Connecticut economic growth. Thank you. If you have any hard questions for Indra, she's ready to take them. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Lehman, step to the microphone, please, sir. That's sure. you. Yes. <laughs> Other than the fact you? that you find the governor to be accessible and pragmatic, uh, can you give us a little bit more of a feel as to why, at mid-career, you're making a very uh, dramatic change? What is sure. it that you read? What is it that you heard from others that made you decide, I'm going to reach out to this guy? I think it's a great question, um, and I think one of the things that really moved me uh, was, was the governor's uh, inaugural address, his State of the State address, and you know specifically when he talked about the need to collaborate and work together, and that governments like Connecticut they don't shut down, um, and that Democrats, Republicans, everyone needs to work towards a common end, and it, it just really spoke to me in a way that um, politics candidly has not previously. So the, the need to work together to get to where we need to be at this point in, in where the state is economically and the overall state economy, that really spoke to me. Uh, and I wanted to, uh, to reach out and, and see if I could be helpful at that point. Did your, what would your colleagues say when you said, I'm going to go to the Utah Development Department of the State of Connecticut? They were, uh, they were surprised. They were surprised. Um, Up until now, how many of your experience, how strong has the partnership been? with uh, state government and private business in, in your expertise and, and I'm not sure I understand the question. Would you well, mind rephrasing it? You know, this is, I don't know if it's new territory, but trying to bring both sides together. And that's not something that's always done. Has it been done uh, in your business? And do you think this is a way to bring the financial industry in with state government to create business? So I think it's the latter, to the best of my knowledge. Um, you know, I, I work with our municipal finance business, so I certainly work with uh, the public sector in my current role. Uh, but in terms of the, the public sector with CERC and this new formation, to the best of my knowledge, that hasn't been done in a lot of areas. I think some states are trying to do it, but um, this is the first time that I'm aware, and certainly the first time I'll be a part of it. Governor Lamont, I have one question about um, a lot of economic development for better or worse is based on uh, grants and loans to bring business, keep businesses here. Charlie Baker and Gina Raimondo and Andrew Cuomo are doing it in neighboring states. Is that a policy you're going to rely on as much as the previous administration, or will you downplay a little bit and look at different strategies for economic development? I think we over relied upon incentives instead of talking about the advantages of being here in the state of Connecticut. And um, 
with Indra and Jim, we're going to really focus on a lot of companies that ought to be here in Connecticut. There's a natural reason for them to be here, you know, over and above incentives and the such. You know, we were talking to Electric Boat. We've been talking to UTC. And you look at the uh, hundreds, even thousands of companies that are in their supply chain that aren't in Connecticut. And uh, Jeffrey Geiger says, I wish some of them were here in Connecticut. So we use them as a way that you come here to the state. So incentives are always going to be part of the game because you can't disarm compared to what's going on elsewhere. But we're really going to talk about what makes Connecticut amazing. And, um, and, and Susan, just part of your question is, from what I understand, we used to have the bishops, and they would get together with the governor, and they worked closely with the legislature. This is going back a generation when the CEOs were um, welcomed into the uh, discourse about the future of the state and how they can be involved. And I think we fell off of that a little bit over the last generation. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to revisit as we get a closer collaboration between business and government and, frankly, labor and government. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that that door is open and we're working together collaboratively. Or as David said, we're not going to get anything done. You just said that there may be a heavy reliance on incentives. And, and that was part of the first five plus program. And other states do that. They offer a lot of money for companies to come. So is that in your mind unsuccessful or is it not enough? Oh, it's certainly not enough. I mean, this state has so many extraordinary advantages why they want to be here. And if we have to do some infrastructure work and otherwise, you know, we'll do what it takes to make sure they come. I was struck by uh, one of my fellow governors when we were competing um, for, to get Infosys here, and uh, she said, that's a hint, um, <laughs> you know, um, I'll match any incentive that Connecticut gives you. Now let me tell you why you ought to be in our state. So I want to talk about why people want to be in the state of Connecticut, where we're going as a state, what that means in transportation, what that means in terms of workforce development. What that means in terms of making sure they have the next generation of workers here so they know what the state's going to look like, that's when people are going to start Governor, coming back to the state. Governor, considering uh, Jim Smith's role in the Fiscal Stability Commission, what level of influence will those recommendations have on what you think the economic development policy, but also other tax policies may look like? Now, this is separate. I mean, what Jim and Indra are going to be doing is they're going to be do leading the outreach to the state, working with existing businesses and trying to attract new businesses. Look, I salute the work he did on the Fiscal Commission, and uh, it's one more way we got the business community and others actively involved. But this is a separate initiative. Could you elaborate a little bit on this, this idea of an expanded CERC board? And can you also discuss what, if any, role organized labor is going to be playing in your economic development program? Yeah, I'll start and then maybe hand it over to, to Jim if you want. But I'd like Jim and Indra to help take the lead and in bringing in folks from the private sector, leaders from different uh, parts of the state, and also from different, um, you know, different businesses. So we have people in insurance, we have people in healthcare, we have people in advanced manufacturing, and we have like-minded folks able to reach out and talk to other CEOs. I'd like it also to be a diverse board, and I'd like to have labor with representation there as well to make sure that everybody is rowing in the same direction when it comes to getting the state growing again. Anything you guys would like to add to that? Sure. Um, I'll just go back to the, the core objective is to supercharge, exponentially expand the activity to retain, expand, and recruit businesses to Connecticut. That's what we're going to be focused on and reallocating the resources accordingly. We haven't worked out yet exactly what does the Board of Directors look like. We know that a lot of the uh, utilities that have supported CERC over the years will become part of an advisory board, which also will be populated by lots of business leaders. A couple of those representatives will also be on the board of CERC with Indra and me. We haven't yet decided, though, what the balance of that will be, although I do agree with the Governor that uh, labor should be represented. Uh, we should have economic development activities that are represented. Businesses should be represented. So it's all of us moving forward together. As a juggernaut for development that really hasn't existed, as Governor Lamont said, in more than a decade. And this is the idea of bringing people together for a common cause that they believe in because there's no telling what you can achieve. And that's what uh, Indra and I believe in. I have a question. Back, back, back. Will you measure? One question over here, and then I'll do one more, okay? No, we'll do a couple more. The question that I have is, uh, and I will speak on behalf of the Hispanic community. Uh, we own a lot of businesses in Hartford. Do you, have, do you guys have a strategy or a plan 
to help them and support the small businesses owned by the Latino community, and they could believe in the, the city that they live in? Yeah. I'll start. I mean, A, thank you for that question. I mean, this is about um, lifting everyone up. I come out of small business. I know how much job creation comes from the small businesses. I want to make sure that the Hispanic and other um, startups get that opportunity. I think about that in terms of contracting. We have a new group that's uh, responsible for contracting at DAS. Make sure it's not the same old boy network, but a, a broader group of people get a chance to bid on what we want to do. And uh, so that's going to be a real priority for us, to make sure that uh, nobody is left behind. And this is a prosperity that's broadly shared, and that includes uh, the startups. I hope you have some startups right here. at. Uh, in Upward Hartford, because uh, this is a great place to start your business. Governor, you, when you mentioned the bishops of Hartford, you were talking about um, an era that, that's kind of passed, about uh, a time and place when all the corporations had local ownership, and that's kind of gone away here, and in places like Boston, where the institution owns the vault, I guess, doesn't play. So can you expand on... on how you think you can recreate that. And, and you know, with emphasis, there was this sort of, I guess, an effort to create a sense of community or purpose among corporate leaders in recruiting them. So can you and perhaps Jim and Indra address how you do that in an age when there's, you know, all the mergers and consolidations have kind of robbed mid-sized cities of that kind of local feel, that local ownership uh, stake? I talked to all these CEOs. I don't feel they lost that sense of local ownership. Uh, you know, I, I, I sense that there are a lot of um, leaders, um, business, labor, um, that believe in this state and want to uh, grow and invest in this state. Uh, some of them happen to be born and raised here. Um, some of them, like Jim, some of them happen not to be born and raised here, like Indra, but they all feel a sense of citizenship for the state of Connecticut. And uh, you're right, we lost that a little bit. We did have some absentee CEOs, and they were choppering down to New York on weekends. I, I know about that. But um, <laughs> uh, I've been really impressed with the uh, folks that want to step up and believe in the state, and um, we'll find them. <laughs> I have a question. Oh, wait, could you, uh, you're in there, uh, you, you want to finish up on this? Sure. Yeah. So I will say uh, I know that the business community is enthusiastic about what Ned's plans are. Indra, Ned, and I have spent time with some of the CEOs of those companies, and we recognize that they've got far-flung international responsibilities. But a lot of them are based here, and they care about that. You'd be amazed at the passion that they display in favor of Connecticut. And what they're looking for is a leader who will recognize their point of view. We're not just going to be cheerleaders who are out trying to solicit companies to come to Connecticut. We need to understand what do we need to do to facilitate business confidence and stimulate uh, private investment. And as we do that, we actually will be able to grow from the inside out. We will retain and expand, and then the recruitment from outside will become easier. And we know that all of our major CEOs have skin in this game, and they want to stay here, but they'll only stay here if we address those issues. That's why this is so exciting, because Ned has a plan that brings it all together, that has earned the confidence of these leaders who will be involved through their companies, if not the CEO, him or herself, somebody in the executive suite of these companies that has regular access to the CEOs that is tasked with making these kinds of decisions on their behalf. So we're highly confident we're talking to the right people in large companies and mid-sized companies and business associations, and that they're all going to buy into this program and that we're going to be better for it. Can you Jim, without Jim, improving transportation? Can I just add yeah. something to what Jim said? Um, the governor has put together clusters, about five or six clusters of industries that we need to uh, develop in Connecticut. And David Shear sent out an email to a bunch of CEOs and to us asking how many people can come to the first convening meeting. I was surprised to see the email trail. Every CEO committed to come to the meeting. Even though the date got changed three times, everybody <laughs> changed their schedule to be there because they thought the convening meeting was so important. That's the level of commitment that exists in Connecticut. When we met with Jim Laurie up in uh, Stanley Black & Decker a few weeks ago, he wanted to set up the cluster for precision manufacturing. Alan Schitzler was going to do it for insurance and uh, financial services. And it's interesting to see how the CEOs want to convene the groups and how the other CEOs of mid-sized and large companies are eager for this sort of a partnership to do something for Connecticut to improve the state of the state. So I think uh, the early indications are everything is very optimistic. So let's see what, what happens, if we can sustain this. I'm sorry. 
Good. I, I, I think we're gonna, look, I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, unless, Laura, you have any last words, we're going to call it a day. <laughs> hey, thank you, everybody. Appreciate you being here.